Having barely escaped from Moria, the Company of the Ring flees into the Forest of Lorien, where they are welcomed by the Elves of the Golden Wood and supplied with boats and other gifts by their Lord and Lady, Celeborn and Galadriel. Then, after a brief rest, they set out upon the River Anduin. Hello, and welcome to the latest episode of the Line Unbroken, my progression-style playthrough series of the Lord of the Rings Living Card Game. Here I'm continuing my campaign mode playthrough of the Lord of the Rings Saga Quests with the third quest from the Road Darkens Saga Expansion, Breaking of Fellowship. I, of course, from last quest, have additional burdens, and because Gandalf is on the list of fallen heroes, each deck gets permanent plus one to its starting threat. And also, because I'm playing campaign mode starting with the first player, each player chooses one of these boons. So, the file of all of them are set up attached to a hero in play, and then action add to the victory to display and remove from the campaign pool to do something. For the file of Galadriel, it's give each enemy engaged with you minus four attack until the end of the round. With the Leaf Wraps Lembus, it's ready all heroes in play. The Lorien Rope is give each location in the staging area minus two threat until the end of the phase. And <coughs> the Three Golden Hairs is lower each player's threat by three, then each player draws three cards. The Lorien Rope, I feel, is definitely much more useful with more players. With two, I don't think I'm going to be that concerned about location lock. I'm generally pretty fond of these two. The file of Gladriel could certainly be very good under some circumstances, but again, I feel like it could be more of a higher player count thing where you have more enemies that will be engaged with you. So I'm going to take the Lembas and the Hares. Let's arbitrarily give the hairs to Boromir and the Lembas to Fatty and that should be everything for setup we've set these aside out of play and these in the staging area so San Gabir <coughs> of course is 3 threat 4 quest points immune to player card effects and forced when it's explored deal 1 damage to each exhausted character while the Argonath is X threat, in this case 2, because it's the number of players in the game, and the players cannot travel here while Sang Beer is in play, while the Argonath is the active location, skip the combat phase. And as we will see now, I can't advance the quest until the Argonath is in the victory display. So the company went on their long way, down the wide hurrying waters, borne ever southwards. Bare woods stalked along either bank, and they could not see any glimpse of the lands behind. Enemies get plus two defense and cannot be engaged. Skip the encounter phase. The players cannot advance while the Argonath is in play. So we're going down the river and obviously this limits our ability to kill our enemies. Because they are all on the shore. Okay. So this is not the best start. Calabrian Stone will be useful to get out, but I can't get it out for this round. Both will be useful, but again I can't get it out for this round. So I guess this deck just can't play anything. Over here, on the other hand, there are a few things that I could do. I think the best course of action is going to be to first place Sting onto Frodo and then also play a fast hitch onto Frodo. And then next round I'll probably go for Master of the Forge. Glare one will also be very useful. So, there's five threats in the staging area. The only enemies I have to worry about are those which attack me from the staging area. So, let's press 4, 5, 7, 8, 10, 12. And we reveal. Either move one enemy engaged with you to the first player staging area, I can't do that because I don't have any, or 
against Doom 2 and Surge. Doom 2 and Surge with the jawline, that's annoying. And slopes of Amon Hen, okay, this is troublesome. A troublesome amount of threat. I make one progress, but still, I will travel directly to San Gabir. And that will be the end of the round. Shift Frodo over here and Control N. Okay, another fast hitch. But now. Oh, I'm not sure, so I suppose I could play Glareline. Both a card draw, but I think right now I would rather have Glareline draw a card for this deck. Okay, <coughs> Envoy of Pelagius. So let's pay two for the Envoy and add a resource to Boromir. And then let's actually pay three for Galadriel. Then I look through the top five cards of my deck and find Steward of Gondor. Then I can reorder these cards. So let's see, I'd like Visionary Leadership next. Campfire Tales would also be useful. Though I might have other uses for my resources than just drawing the cards. So let's put it something like that. Immediately exhaust steward to get two more resources. And play Calabrian Stone. Alright, so there is eight threat in the staging area. Request for four, eight, ten, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen, and oh, oh, with a chore line. Last round, the Wooded Shoreline was in the staging area, which meant Archery 2 should have happened. So I would put one point onto Glayerwine and one point onto Legolas. We now have another Wooded Shoreline and Black Feathered Arrows until the end of the round. Add one to the Archery total at this stage for each ally currently at this stage, which is three. I'll just put three damage on there to remind me of that. No enemies still. I'm not sure if that's good or bad. And I just realized that I didn't think this through. I'm about to kill a couple of allies. The, which will reduce the archery, but that won't matter because we skip the combat phase when the Argonath is active. So I've only added three threat. It makes six progress. Four, five, six. Add this to the victory display and deal one damage to each exhausted character, which unfortunately kills Glarewine. And the envoy. Since characters were just destroyed, I should attach Overcome with Grief to Fatty. And now let's travel to the Argonath, which means we skip the combat phase, so we don't have to assign the archery damage at the end of the round. Galadriel is discarded, 
and we control N again. Frodo is back over here. We've got steward for a couple more resources. Oh, and that's very useful. Right. So I want to get down visionary leadership and both uh, then I think leaves it that. Um, well, well, actually, no. No, actually, I think maybe I want to play this Aaron Rider right now and shuttle one of Frodo's resources over to Aragorn. So now I will play Arwen and I think I'll also play Unexpected Courage onto Aragorn. And let's, let's, I think, also stick a fast hitch on Mary. So, now, there is nine threat in the staging area. So let's quest four, six, eight, twelve, 14, 16. Oh, and it's targeting Frodo. Yes, the problem I have is that I'm not going to explore the quest stage. Because I've got a lot of threat from these locations. I can't get through. But okay. Right, Green Drawson, so surge. Ah, here we are. Either choose a player to reveal an encounter card or Urukai Hunter makes an immediate attack against you. So I will take the attack. This is for deck one. Hmm. I'll have Frodo defend and use Sting, discarding the top card of the encounter deck, which is X threat, so it does no damage. And then I suppose I don't really want to risk <coughs> the shadow effects, so spend a fellowship resource things off the one ring and raise each player's threat by two so the attack deals no damage. Would have been alright, would have only been one damage, but better safe than sorry. And the second card of staging is doomed to and surge. Surges into another slope to Lamb on Hen. So I've added five threat. At present I'm only clearing the arc map. I'm going to exhaust fatty targeting this enemy. Right in threat by two to bring it up to four progress, but that's all I can do. This goes to the victory display. Now, of course, enemies cannot be engaged, so uh, the ring draws them, does nothing. It attempts to make the enemy engage, but the enemy cannot engage because we're in the middle of a river. So, uh, wooded shoreline. I need to get rid of the archery, but it will. Bring up another enemy. 
However, it's impossible for me to travel to the slopes of one hand, so I really have to do this. Uh, so let's take another hunter and thus avoid the when revealed, I think. Or I could take a tracker, which is less threat, and I avoid the surge. Let's go with that. Though it does, of course, have archery of its own. So now I have archery. Three. One, two, three. That's all. Control in. Okay, Warden of Healing, that's good. I will, of course, play the Warden of Healing. Actually, no, I think I want to quest with my own rider visionary leadership, so will not shuttle a resource, I'll play Envoy of Pelagir, get another resource on here. Citadel Custodian will currently cost two because there are three Gondor allies in play. So let's bring him out as well. Now, threat in the staging area is 3, 6, 9, 11, 12. Yep. So we quest for 4, 8, 10, 12, still tied to the Frodo. 14, 16, 18, 19, 21. How would that be? 21, uh, 23, Rokai Captain, and River Ending. That's another 5 threat. I'm currently making 6 progress. Still can't clear the quest stage. Um, I could get more progress. With fatty, sure. I mean, I've got Morrigan to reset. And I'm actually going to travel to the river and you in <coughs> to avoid the additional threat rays it will bring, and also because it doesn't have a travel cost. So my archery, once again, is three. Uh, one, two, three. And I will exhaust the Warden of Healing to heal up Aragorn and... Actually, no, Merry and Pippin. Because they have very few hit points. <sighs> Control in once more. Right, so let's play Campfire Tales. All right. 
right, and now let's play a target ship captain. Trigger his response to transfer results from Legolas to Aragorn. Actually, no, transfer it from Frodo to Aragorn. And then let's play these ranger spikes. Let's play this unexpected courage. I think still just give more actions to Aragorn. And let's play this master of the forge. Actually, let's play the master of the forge first. And use him. See if I find anything useful before I spend all my other resources. More ranger spikes, another fast hitch. I'll take the spikes, and then I will play as I said before. Right. So three, six, nine. 11, 12, 15, right. Request 4, 6, 8, 9, 11, 13, 15, 19, 21, 23, 25, Okay, when revealed the Scarlet Ally you control. I suppose I'll ditch the Errand Rider. Which reduces my wealth all by one. And Gildor and Glorian, okay. 24 versus 15. It's still 15 because this is 2 threat, but it's on the Ranger Spikes. So I make 9 progress. And I advance the quest, finally. The river has carried the company as far as it can, and the time has come for Frodo to choose which way to go. He asks for an hour to decide, but after he disappears, orcs are discovered prowling the woods, and the company scatters to find him. When revealed, remove the ring bearer and each card attached to it from the game. Treat the one ring's text as blank while resolving this effect. Reduce each enemy's engagement cost to zero until the end of the encounter phase. Skip the travel phase this round. This is unfortunate because Frodo is very useful, but he is going to be out of play for a while. Lock him so that. I feel like he should lose all his resources at this point as well because he's out of the game. And so when he comes back, it'll be like he's just entered play for the first time, is my interpretation. And yes, every enemy has zero engagement cost until the end of the encounter phase. And this doesn't do anything until the end of the refresh phase, and Frodo is going to be in the way. So possibly these. So, this has an engagement cost of zero, but... It doesn't, we do not make engagement checks against it because of the ranger spikes. So we only have to deal with these three enemies. I think what I want is this. Do that shadow cards. And um, okay, so archery. There is one, two, three, four, five points of archery. One, 
two, three. The other two points I'll put on Mary Pippin and immediately heal. Aragorn will sentinel the Urukai tracker. He takes one damage. I'll play the two feints in my hand on the other enemies. Now, Mary and Legolas will attack for a total of... Oh, no, wait. It's only four, and it takes five to kill one of these. Okay, so which one do I want to kill? I think I want to kill the hunter. Because it has more attack. And I will trigger Mary to ready Legolas. And then Legolas can attack at ranged. Plus Aragorn. Comes to a total of seven. Fatty can chip in for another one. And we kill the Urukai captain. I could trigger Legolas to put progress on here, but it wouldn't do anything. So that's discarded. <coughs> and now we move into the refresh phase. So, at the end of the refresh phase, I don't think there's anything else we'd do at this point. I could trigger Aragorn to reset my threat. And I think I might want to do that. So, uh, 26 including the boost from the Fallen Hero. This deck I think can ride it out a little bit longer before resetting. But on this side 42 is a bit high and it's stopping me triggering Pippin when I engage. So, at the end of the refresh phase, shuffle Seat of Seeing and Frodo's Choice into the encounter discard pile. It is not actually possible to shuffle the discard pile. So, I'll instead move all the cards in the discard pile into the special deck. And then also add the Seat of Seeing and Frodo's Choice. Oh, this is set up. Okay, um, having put everything in setup by mistake, I will then move it to the special deck, as I originally intended. Shuffle, and move all to encounter deck bottom. which is the next thing it tells me to do. Uh, starting with the first player, each player creates his own staging area and advances to a different stage 3A of his choice. In player order, each player moves one encounter card from this staging area to his. When there are no encounter cards left at this stage, discard it. So. Uh, okay. I will deal with the different stage 3s in a minute. But firstly, it's moving cards. So there are four encounter cards. So we're going to get two each. One deck will get two locations. The other will get a location and an enemy with no threat because of ranger spikes. So... I suppose the question becomes who do I think can muster more willpower immediately to get through the slopes of my hand? Do not have Shadow of the Past to recycle Gildor. <coughs> um, just to maximize the chances of finding Shadow of the Past to recycle Gildor, I'm going to trigger most of the forge during the refresh phase. 
and find no attachments. Okay, so this deck quests for eight and can cancel the threat of an enemy. Where this deck quests for potentially more. So, okay, this deck will have two locations, and this deck over here will have this. And now for quest stage three, I'll just bring them all out. The A sides are all the same apart from the flavor text, which I will read. Sam had dashed off first. Mary and Pippin had followed and were already disappearing westward into the trees by the shore, shouting Frodo, Frodo in their clear high hobbit voices. Boromir, I do not know what part you have played in this mischief, but help now. Go after those two young hobbits and guard them at the least, even if you cannot find Frodo. I am going to the top, to the seat of Amon Hen, to see what may be seen. And look, it is as my heart guessed, Frodo went this way. Follow me and keep your eyes open. So it was that Legolas and Gimli found him. They came from the western slopes of the hill, silently, creeping through the trees as if they were hunting. Gimli had his axe in hand, and Legolas his long knife. All his arrows were spent. So. They all have the same A side, as I say. And the B sides are mostly the same. They all say if Frodo's choice is not in play, any time players would place progress on this quest, discard an equal number of cards from the encounter deck instead. Forced, after Frodo's choice is revealed at this stage, advance to stage 4A. Response, after you quest successfully. That is the point at which they diverge. In this case, discard an enemy engaged with a player. In this case, choose a player. That player draws two cards and lowers his threat by two. In this case, choose a player, ready each of that player's heroes. And in this case, discard a non-unique location in any staging area. Now, to be honest, I'm not hugely concerned. I'm generally very fond of the ready each of that player's heroes option. But actually, thinking about it, it's not going to be that useful, because I have all these unexpected courages going around, and the heroes who don't get ready effects, like Legolas and Pippin and Fatty, are only good at one aspect of the game. Pippin is just going to be questing, he's not going to be useful ready for combat. Legolas won't be questing, so that's not going to be so helpful. Discarding non-unique locations could be useful, but often will just clear out the staging area so it doesn't stay useful for very long. These two, on the other hand, getting rid of enemies could be a problem, especially when, of course, they have archery. So that may be something that I want to do. And, of course, here... drawing cards and lowering threat. The lowering threat is less of an issue for this deck because it hasn't had its Loragorn reset yet, but drawing cards is always good. So in fact I'm going to take these two and... Hmm, I suppose that's a question. Which way around do I want them? These two I'll move to the bottom of the quest deck to get them out of the way. Yeah, so do I want... Which deck do I want to be discarding enemies, and which do I want to be contributing the card draw and threat reduction? I don't actually know how much it'll matter, so let's just have it this way around. Right, and the 
the A sides, as I say, are the same. For after stage 2B is discarded, I don't bother discarding my quest stages, but technically this is the point at which I would. If the total threat of encounter cards in the staging in this staging area is less than four, reveal one encounter card. In this case, it is six. In this case, it is three. So I have to reveal an encounter card for this deck. Which is fine, because until the end of the round, we are doing this at the end of the refresh phase, which is slightly before the end of the round. So I add to the archery total. I never used my Warden of Healing, apparently. Oh no, this is the refresh phase. That's, that's the thing. Um, so I add to the archery total until the end of the round, which is now. So that extra archery does not come into play. Ah, they've got him. Alright. So. Well, I found another Master of the Forge. And. Yeah, okay. I think I'll just play another set of Ranger Spikes. Oh, well, actually, no. No. I'm going to play another Master of the Forge. So I'll stay in to see if I can find anything useful. Okay, Ring of Power here. I'll take that. And then play it onto Aragorn, giving him an extra two hit points from the ring itself and Calabrian Stone for bringing artifacts. And over here, let's give Legolas a Blade of Gondolin. And I suppose that will have to be it. So, this deck is questing first. There is three threat in the staging area. Oh, Gildor has been discarded. And so, quest for four, six, eight. So what we can do. And reveal my feathered arrows. Okay. Fill the round, add one to the archery total at this stage for each ally currently at this stage, which is four. But I revealed no more threats, so I make five progress, which comes in the form of five cards being discarded from the top of the encounter deck. Five. And because I quested successfully, I can discard an enemy engaged with a player. And on this side. There is six threat in the saving area. We can quest for two, four, six, eight, ten. And reveal Orcs of the White Hand. Remove all damage from each enemy at this stage. Each enemy at this stage gets plus one threat, plus one attack, and plus one defense until the end of the round. Interestingly, there is no caveat on this for what happens if there are no enemies at this stage, which there aren't. So that's just added zero threat, so I make four progress, which discards four cards from the top of the encounter deck. Okay. And because I quested successfully, I can choose a player to draw two cards and lower their threat by two. It will be this deck. Two cards. Down to threat. Well, there's Shadow of the Past. It's too late now. Gildor has been lost. Right, in travel. Okay, yeah, so this deck will travel to the slopes of Elmer Hen. 
which means engaging the Rakai Archer, which in turn draws a card for Pippin. And this deck will travel to the Wooded Shoreline, which means I have to <coughs> find an enemy and add it to the staging area. So, yeah, I think I would like to take out one of these Urukai Hunters, and of course this means that I will get to shuffle the encounter deck, which may bring Frodo's choice closer to the top and the seat of scene. Shuffle. And I will then optionally engage the hunter. So, this stage has archery for five to deal with. Sign archery separately still. Okay, so. Five. Sick fatty's not a hand. One, two, three. Four. I might just kill a monster of the forge. No, because that would trigger overcome by grief. Which is not a huge concern, I suppose. But I'd still rather not. Five. On this side, there is no archery. So, defending this four tank. Aragorn will defend. He takes two damage. And over here, Boromir will defend this one. He likewise takes two damage. Warden of Healing. Oh! Arwen should have been targeting someone, but I didn't think about it. Warden of Healing will heal Aragorn and Boromir. Now, let's see, it'll take. Okay, yeah, hang on. So. Right, this has toughness 1, and 1 defense for the hit points, so it takes 6 to kill it. If I attack for 5, I'll deal 3, three damage. Over here, this has toughness 1, 1 defense for the hit points, so it takes 5 to kill it. Legolas has plus 1 when attacking orcs, so 1, 5. Killing this, triggering Legolas and the Blade of Gondolin to place three progress, and triggering Merry to ready Legolas, who can then declare a ranged attack against the archer. Four attack against one defense and one toughness will deal two damage, which is enough to kill the archer and trigger both responses again. So. One progress there clears the location, and two more will discard from the top of the encounter deck. This is gone. And here we go. Right, this is not helpful. So let's move straight over to here. Okay, I'll grab Fellowship of the Ring.
though it might not actually be relevant. And I will grab the mithril shirt, which will be relevant once Frodo comes back. And then let's play another set of ranger spikes. And then let's play down the runes. And discard a copy of Shadow of the Past. Spirit cards in my list card piles, I'm drawing two is not good. Alright, so there is three threat in the staging area. Ah, hang on, no. I will for this deck's planning exhaust both of to search the top five cards in the deck for a weapon. There are no weapons. Alright, so our quest for two, four, six, eight. Could just go for six, actually. Let's just go for six. And we're going to captain. So, okay, that's six. On this side, there is nothing in the staging area, so let's quest. Four, six, eight. Targeting Aragorn for the extra defense. And revealing another Kai Archer which lands on the Ranger Spikes and causes me to discard one of my Masters of the Forge. So that's no threat. I make eight progress. Three of which goes on here. And five of which will discard cards from the encounter deck. One, two, three, four. Three burden gone there. Five. So we're definitely getting close to the, the things. Right, so. This deck will travel to the slopes of Amon Hen, which requires it to engage an enemy. Uh, I'll choose not to engage this Urukai Archer. So now, the captain is attacking for five. I could throw my Sipstar Custodian under the bus. Yeah, I think I want to throw my Sipstar Custodian under the bus. Now, of course, allies with fewer printed hit points than Orakai Captain cannot defend against Orakai Captain, but it is printed hit points. The Sipstar Custodian has three printed hit points, even if right now he only has one hit point left. And there's Frodo's choice. So I'll look at when I kill this. <coughs> uh, but uh, this deck also has to assign one archery damage. So I guess I'll assign it to. Actually, no. No, I will heal before the combat phase. And heal from Aragorn. And fatty, and then assign the archery to fatty. Now it takes seven to kill this. So uh, three, four, eight. Dead. So Frodo's choice at the shadow card is discarded. If Frodo's choice is discarded, reveal it instead. 
When revealed, take control of the first player token and the ring bearer. And each card attached to it. Attached to the ring bearer. For the rest of the game, you cannot lose control of the first player token. And, of course, oh yeah, we both quested successfully, so I should have had this deck drop into threat and draw two cards. Um, yes. So, after Frodo's choice is revealed at this stage, advance to stage 4A. The ring bearer sets out. Now, Sam, said Frodo, don't hinder me. The others will be coming back at any minute. If they catch me here, I shall have to argue and explain that I shall never have the heart or the chance to get off. But I must go at once. It's the only way. When revealed, add Path Galen to the staging area. If it is your quest phase, end the phase. Do not resolve the quest. It is not the quest phase. So, flip this over. During the quest phase, reveal one additional encounter card for each player in the game. Response. After an enemy is revealed at this stage, raise your threat by X to engage that enemy. X is that enemy's threat. Each player at any stage may trigger this ability once per round. When the stage is defeated, the players win the game. And, of course, I just killed an enemy with Legolas with a blade of Gondolin, so I can place the three progress, which explores this location. Frodo no longer needs to be locked. And I think that's it for the round. During the refresh phase, I might take this opportunity to reset this deck's threat back to 27. Oh, which, since it'll get raised, <coughs> 26 will have been but it's now 27. As it should be. So use the Master of the Forge to dig out. Hmm, protective Lion. More unexpected courage. And take the courage, I think, yeah. And uh, now, yes, now we see why Fellowship of the Ring is potentially irrelevant, because Fellowship of the Ring is only in this deck, and this deck can never control Frodo for the rest of the game, so I can't play it. Right, so let's also put a Blade of Goblin onto Mary. And that'll have to be it for this deck. Over here, let's play another Warden of Healing and play another Warden. I want to save a resource for Test of Will. Actually, no, I don't care that much. I want to play more expected courage onto Boromir. So, we are of course still questing separately. So, there is two threat in the staging area on this side. And we, are ha we have to reveal three cards. Because it's one additional for each player in the game. So, two additional on top of the one base. So, let's quest for four. Six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, and we reveal River and River. Slopes around our hand, <coughs> growing threat, which will be Doom Two and Surge since. We are in separate staging areas. The Doomed only affects this deck. Surges into the Seat of Seeing. Right. Okay. So. 
So we've got a six threat, so I'm making six progress. And I suppose under the circumstances, since we're in campaign mode, I'm actually going to travel to the seat of seeing. Oh, but first this deck gets to quest. So four, six, eight. Uh oh, when is targeting Frodo. This deck only reveals one card. <coughs> okay. Well, it makes an immediate attack. Since I've just made Frodo a sentinel, I will have him defend, discarding a card for Sting. Three threat. Toughness one, so it only deals two damage. Uh, now, Frodo is actually four defense. Oh, wait, why did I not play the Mithril Shirt? I should have played the Mithril Shirt. <coughs> um, but I think I still don't want to risk this, so. Um, I have to assume that for Frodo's ability it still has to be both players raising their threat by two. Um, okay, after this attack, move attacking enemy to the first player's staging area. It's only after an enemy is revealed at this stage. So this still happens. Alright. So, that means that there is still no threat here, but that doesn't help because I, there's no need for me to make progress. I'm no longer discarding from the encounter deck. I can discard an enemy engaged with a player, but no enemies are engaged with players. So, uh, this deck will travel to the seat of seeing. At the end of the travel phase, each player at this stage raises a threat by one. Then River Anduin moves to the staging area to the left, if able. From which this deck will travel to it. Yeah, okay. Now, for the encounter phase, we'll have to engage this Orakai Hunter. Still don't have to engage this Orakai Archer, which is just contributing one archery damage. Though I'm not that bothered about. So, bottom man will defend. Okay, takes two damage. <coughs> Over here, I assign one more archery to Aragorn. This is going in the wrong order, but uh, have easily enough to kill the hunter. Cannot place progress because the seat of seeing is immune to player card effects. And I will use my Wardens of Healing to heal Aragorn and Boromir, and then Aragorn and Boromir. Control N. Okay. 
Well, there's obviously nothing this deck can play. I could use both as ability. I think... I, I don't know, I suppose I don't really need a lot more stuff. But, okay, no, yeah, I'm going to trigger buffer to... no, nope, no weapons in there. Should have just quite a bit of... Over here, however, I'll pay one for Protector of Lion on Boromir. Actually, no, on Frodo. And pay one for the Mithril Shirt on Frodo. And leave it at that. So now, there is five threats in the staging area. We request for four, six, eight. 10, 12. And reveal. Okay, Archer. Reveal discard an ally you control. I'll discard both her. Since I have a spare. <coughs> and this deck. We'll raise its threat by two to immediately engage the archer. Withdraw the card for Pippin. This is per the response on here. The ring draws them. Okay, surge. And at the end of the phase, each enemy in the staging area engage the first player. Okay. Surge is into a wooded shoreline. And Orakai Archer and revealed discard an ally you control. That's very annoying. I suppose I'll ditch the envoy, which drops my willpower by two. Oh, oh sorry. I only had to raise my threat by one to engage that archer. Its threat is X, where X is the number of players at this stage, not in the game. Uh, speaking of which, this deck will raise threat by one to engage this. So, I've added three threat to the staging area and lost two willpower, so I'm only making two progress right now. I can discard the Protector of Lorien but not enough to actually clear this location. So, I guess I'll just take two progress. And that will be that. Over here, there is still zero threat in the staging area, and so I'll be questing for the same eight. Arwen is still targeting Frodo. And we reveal just the one card. Now uh, the first player must exhaust the one ring. Okay, and it surges. Surge. Right. Uh, so I've added four threat, which means I make four progress. Doesn't quite clear the location, not that bothered. I still quested successfully, so I can discard an enemy engaged with a player. I'm going to discard this one. Actually, no. No, I'm not going to discard that one. Bring it back. I'm going to discard this one. 
If I discard that one, then all this attack power on Boromir and Merry will go to waste. So, there's no travel. <coughs> I don't really want to engage the captain. The tracker, on the other hand. Let's take the tracker. So, archery here is one, two, three. Um, one, two, three. And Frodo will defend, discarding to sting. Okay. And I'm not going to be able to shadow the past him because we don't have the resources and shadow cards will get <coughs> dropped on top of him. Um, speaking of which, discard a non objective attachment you control. Um, I think I will discard the three golden hair because I'm not going to use them. And yeah, they should go to my player discard pile, not the encounter discard pile. Uh, Frodo, between everything, has enough defense. He takes no damage. Over here, oh, no, finish resolving everything. Kill the archer, ready like a with Mary. Now, over here, there is archery 2. So I'll heal in the travel phase and then deal the archery back. Aragorn defends. The defending character has fewer printed hit points. That's fine. Takes one damage. And we can kill this. So let's do some more healing. And control N once again. Attachments in there. Now I'm going to play this deep knowledge. Okay, this looks a bit better. I actually have things to spend my resources on. Both uh Cargo ship captain transferring resource from Mary to Aragorn. Errand rider, squire of the citadel. Over here, let's see. Um, yeah, let's 
play Gleowine again. And I have the stack draw a card. Unfortunately, it's too late to play it, but still good. I do want to hold back one for a test of will. And this deck doesn't really need a lot of willpower. It could give these Westward Travelers to the other deck, that would be great. But it can't, so let's just play some more Ranger Spikes. And questing! Eight threat. <coughs> oh, once again, I could have used both his ability. How much will I be questing for? Four, five, six, eight, nine, eleven, thirteen, usually fourteen, sixteen. No, I want to quest with both. Four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Slopes of ammo on hen. Slopes of ammo on hen. And river anyway. I can just get enemies. Okay, so I've added another eight threat, and I'm break even. <sighs> and over on this side, there is three threat in the staging area. Yeah. Then the quest for the usual eight. Arwen still targets Frodo. That's a point. Okay, yeah, I'm going to have Frodo discard visionary leadership to get one progress. <coughs> right, yes, uh, question for eight, I'll then target Frodo. And we get another Kai Hunter, which lands on Ranger Spikes and makes an immediate attack, which I will defend with Frodo. The the defending character does have fewer printed hit points than the attacking enemy. So this attack is considered undefended. Because, yeah, Frodo's printed hit points are two. His current hit points are three because of the metal shirt. But... Okay, so on four undefended damage. Aragorn has seven max hit points. So let's do some healing. And then the other damage. Oh, uh, I should have discarded for Sting. And Dart got the damage there. So I've uh, <coughs> added no more threat. So I explore the river Anduin. Travel. This happens and then this happens. Uh, let's move this over. I could engage the captain. Still don't really want to. There is archery two over here and one here. So it would be one here and two here. And then that's it for the round.
Okay, fast hitch. Glare wine. Right, so let's tap this deck, draw a card. Right, so. Let's play three for Galadriel. Top five cards of my deck for Landring and then Faramir is the thing that I want to draw next, followed by the ship captain, then the Blade of Gondolin. For Glamdring, we'll go straight on to Legolas. <coughs> now let's also play this Defender of Ramos and this is in light of power gear and resource to Boromir. And then over here, we can put another fast hitch onto Frodo. And play a Westworld Traveller. So, there is 14 threat in the staging area. In this quest, four, four, six, eight, ten, thirteen, fifteen. 17, 19, 20, 21, 22. Things are strange when you're questing in your Defenders of Ramus, but. Apparently, these are the times that I'm living in. Okay, so we have Captain. The Rakai Archer. Discard now when you control. Uh, to lose nearly the amount of willpower. So I guess I'll just ditch the square of the citadel and get a resource back. And also raise my threat by one to engage it. And I will choose a player to have an encounter card or it makes them easy to attack. Okay, so it makes them easy to attack. Which will be defended by Frodo, discarding to Sting. Nothing, that's fine. Uh, plus one or plus two if the defending character has fewer printed hit points, which he does. Uh, I'm four defense and three hit points, so still only two damage. And this deck, where it is threat by two to engage this enemy. So I've added three threat to the staging area. So I'm currently making five progress. I'm going to play hands upon the bow. Legolas, who attacks for three, four, six, seven, which is enough to kill the Orc High Captain. 
And I triggered Glamdring, having just destroyed an orc to draw a card. And so now I make eight progress. This goes to the victory display, and I can choose a burden card in play in the encounter deck or in the discard pile and remove it from the game. And also from the campaign pool. So. I feel like Pursued by the Enemy is a pretty good choice to remove. <coughs> I avoid the Doomed One, I avoid the Shadow Effect. Whereas, yeah, Followed by Night could be bad, but it doesn't have a Shadow Effect, so I feel like this is kind of worse. Uh, other possibilities. I'm not that bothered by it. Overcome by grief. Oh, of course, I only have to choose one of Followed by Nightingale Fate anyway at the end of the quest. So, yeah, Ill Fate, not that big a deal. The Ring draws them, not that big a deal. Overcome by Terror, not that big a deal. So, uh, pursued by the enemy is being removed from the game and from the campaign pool. Just stick in the victory display. <coughs> and now this deck's questing. There is three threat in the staging area. And we're questing for eight. No, no, ten. Growing threat. Um, hmm. You know what? I'm just going to cancel it since I have three tests of will in my hand. So that's fine. I explore this and can discard an enemy engaged with a player. Now. Try to pop Galen, I get another enemy. It's still probably the best course of action. Just finish the quest. So, what's left in the encounter deck? Sure, I will take the Urukai Tracker. Okay, so shadows may be attack boosts. <coughs> right. Now I'll have to engage this. Still not that keen to engage the captain. So, okay. March of two, three, four. I will put three points on Galadriel and one on Botha. Galadriel dies. What a shame. Now uh, let's just do my healing now. Healing on Frodo and Aragorn. So. These two attacks are of course Arwen targeted Frodo. <coughs> so Frodo will defend against Yeah, Frodo will defend against the tracker. Discarding for sting, no damage. And he takes no damage. Aragorn will sentinel this one. He takes two damage. Uh, 
Attack and kill this. This is the fire card effect. Oh, it has the lawn trait. Never noticed that before. Probably unique among all locations. And probably may as well attack and deal one damage. Uh, over here, the archery one to assign. I think we can have it. Let me control N. What were the cards that were left in the deck? Oh. Okay. So play another Vargas ship captain. Move resource from my last Aragorn. Play Faramir. That's that. Over here. Let's just pay three for ally Elrond and full for Algorn, I think. <coughs> oh, so Glarewine should have drawn an extra card for this deck. Well, I guess I'll put that blade of God away that one to Mary. So, 12 threat. Request 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19, 20. Revealed by five arrows. Which I can test of will. Black five arrows again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And River I'm doing. That's I lose two additional threat. I'm currently making six progress. Well, I've lost Faramir, which gets me another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten willpower. So I'm making sixteen progress. For first resolution, I'll do my healing. And I have won the game. Okay, that I got bogged down a bit at the seat of seeing. Might have been better off going for one of the other locations, but it's a, kind of an issue with this stage where you reveal more cards and okay, you can take the enemies away, but you can't take the locations away. So if you didn't bring northern trackers or anything, then you just have to have massive amounts of willpower. Still, it's worked out. I have explored the seat of seeing, so I get to remove Pursued by the Enemy from the Campaign Pool. Speaking of the Campaign Pool, the Fallen into Evil is attached to a hero. Add that hero to the list of Fallen Heroes in the Campaign Log. It is not. 
The first player chooses either followed by night or ill fate to be added to the campaign pool. I choose ill fate. The chosen burden card has been earned by the players. Each player chooses one hero he controls, other than the ring bearer or Aragorn, to be taken captive. Record the name of each captive in the notes section of the campaign log. I am probably going for the thematic choices. Both Mary and Pippin. <coughs> I could go back on that, but I think most likely I'll go with the thematic choices, as I say. And it should work out. So, yeah, that took longer than I expected. I really, I got bogged down on the first stage with too many locations, and then I got bogged down on the final stage with too many locations. <coughs> but I made it through. Didn't find some of the significant things. This deck never got the sword that was broken. Of course, Flash of the Ring got stuck on the wrong side of the table. I guess I needed a message from Elrond to steal a good harvest. I would have needed to draw the good harvest first, though. So. Yeah, never found Anduril. But basically, this worked in the end. I got the Gondor Swarm for suitable tons of willpower. And this deck worked out fine. Lorigorn, of course, incredibly powerful, allowing me. Well, obviously, with these threats, if I hadn't reset both decks, I would have threatened out on both sides. So, very successful all round, really. Well, thank you for watching. Come back for the next one, and goodbye.